Hey everyone, Diamond here, and in this video I will demonstrate several built-in Python functions that help process iterables without having to create any for loops yourself. The functions that are discussed in this video are fast, memory efficient, and when used properly make your code more concise and readable. I address the functions in no particular order, and if you are already familiar with a given function, you can easily skip to the next one using the timestamps in the description. Note that in this video I only discuss Python's built-in functions, with one exception, as to keep the video within a reasonable length. Other useful modules such as ITERTOOLS will be covered in a future video. Before we go over all the functions, let me briefly explain what the term iterable means in Python. An iterable is any Python object that is capable of returning its members one at a time, permitting it to be iterated over in a loop. There are sequential iterables that arrange items in a specific order such as lists, tuples, strings and dictionaries. There are also non-sequential collections that are iterables. For example, a set is an iterable despite lacking any specific order. In general, iterables can be easily processed by creating a for loop that allows for successively handling each item that is part of the iterable. Depending on your experience with Python, you might have found yourself frequently programming loops that are relatively similar to one another. For that reason, there are plenty of great built-in Python functions that help you process your iterables without reinventing the wheel. Note that Python's built-in functions are actually written in C, meaning that they are also very efficient for Python standards. I will briefly go over each function and when useful, provide a simplified Python equivalent to help you understand what it does and how it works. All takes an iterable as argument and returns true if all elements of the iterable evaluate to true. If the iterable is empty, true is returned as well. Any takes an iterable as argument and returns true if any element of the iterable evaluates to true. Contrary to all, false is returned if the iterable is empty. Enumerate takes an iterable as argument and returns a generator that assigns an incrementing number to each sequential item in the iterable. Incrementing starts at zero by default, but a different start value can be provided by the optional start parameter. As the name suggests, filter is used to create a subset of an iterable. The function takes an iterable and a conditional function as parameters and applies the function to each item in the iterable. Only items for which a conditional function returns true are retained and stored in the subset. Map is one of my favorite built-in Python functions and is great for when you want to transform the items of an iterable. It takes an iterable and a transformer function as parameters and applies this function to every item of the iterable yielding the results. As their name suggests, min and max return respectively the minimum and maximum value of an iterable. The usual behavior of Python's less than or greater than operator is applied to determine the output of the functions. Note that if you're confused by the output of the min and max functions on the list of strings, understand that the strings are evaluated based on their alphabetical order. Reversed is simple yet useful. It reverses the provided iterable and yields the results. Please note that whenever a dictionary is provided, a reverse iterator of the dictionary's keys is returned rather than a reverse dictionary. Sum adds up all elements in an iterable and returns the total. Zip is another favorite of mine. It allows to iterate over several iterables in parallel, producing tuples containing one item from each iterable. To visualize Zip's output, imagine a zipper that you'd find on your clothing. It brings two different parts together. If the provided iterables differ in length, the shortest iterable determines the length of the output. There is one non-built-in function that I just had to include in this video. The counter function from Python's collection module. As the name suggests, it counts elements in an iterable and returns a collection where elements are stored as dictionary keys and their counts are stored as dictionary values. Counts are allowed to be any integer value including zero and even negative counts if you need those. Before we can use counters, we have to import the container from Python's collections library. Python includes this library by default, so there is no need to download anything. We can then simply pass an iterable to the constructor and counter does all the hard work for us. Note that elements with an equal occurrence are sorted in the order first encountered. If we are merely interested in the n most frequent elements of an iterable, counter provides a convenient method called most common. It returns a list of the n most common elements and their counts sorted from most to least common. Anyway, that's it for this video. I hope you find it useful and remember, using built-ins every day keeps redundant lines away. See you at the next one.